Now, we are going to start with the budgeting methodology and we are going to see how we are going to prepare different budgets, how we are going to prepare capital budgets, operating budgets. The first thing we need to understand the master budget, which is at the same time we call it annual profit plan, which is, encompasses the organization's operating and financial plan for a specific period of time. Usually it's a year or an operating cycle. So we call it the master budget. And usually with the master budget, what we, we, uh, we do with the master budget, we start from the sales until we get to our, our at the end, cash and at the same time, our like operating uh, budget, we are gonna do pro forma for the income and the balance sheet and understand exactly what's gonna happen during the year. So let's start with the operating budget. Operating budget emphasis, uh, emphasize, uh, the emphasis is on obtaining the, uh, and, and using current resources. See, so when we are speaking operating, we are speaking about what, approximately one year, or, uh, life si or uh, like a business cycle for, for the business. So in, in operating expenses, we are gonna focus on sales budget, we are gonna focus on production budget, direct material budget, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, and finished goods, and cost of goods sold. Can you see we start from sales? So think about it like this. The first thing we have our objective. Our objective is to make cars. This year is our, if you remember, do you remember when we are speaking about our objective and we are speaking about our budget, we have different periods. We have one year or one to two years or to five years or we have 10 years. So if you have one, less than one year, it's operating budget. After that, we have intermediate budget, which is one to two years or we have strategic budget, which is uh, two to 10 years or two to five years. So when we are starting with operating, we are, need to say, okay, if we are speaking about operating budget, we are speaking about one year. This year we decided we are gonna make 100 cars. So look, we started not, we want cost, we want to, to get some employees, no, we start with our objective. We want to make 100 cars. What's the meaning of it? That we are gonna sell 100 cars. See, when we are saying we want to make 100 cars, why? Because we are going to sell 100 cars. So you start with what with the sales budget. You say, this year I'm going to sell, not make, I'm going to sell 100 cars. So I, I will understand exactly what is my sales budget. And after that, I will say, okay, for me to be able to sell 100 cars, I need to do what production? I need to make 100 cars. So I will go to the production budget. And for me to be able to make 100 cars, I need to be able to get the raw materials for 100 cars. So I will go to the raw materials budget. And after that, for me to be able to work on these cars, I need to get employees. So I will go to the direct labor budget. And for me, I need to have the factory working. So I will go to the manufacturing overhead budget. And after that, based on that, I will determine the end finished good uh, inventory budget and the cost of goods sold budget. Can you see how we go step by step down? So you go, you start from sales until you get exactly to what exactly you need from raw materials and employees. Now when, and this is, we are speaking about operating budget, but we are speaking about what manufacturing budget. Sometimes we need to speak about non-manufacturing budget, like research and development budget, like design budget, marketing budget, distribution, customer service, administrative budget. And at the same time, we have something called pro formula income statement. What's the meaning of pro forma? Pro forma. The meaning of pro forma that it's not, the, when we are saying income statement, it's the income statement that will describe the events that happened during a period of time. When we are saying pro forma, it's about what's gonna happen next year. So we are creating like the income statement based on our uh, uh, predictions and our budget. And we are saying, okay, this is what we think the, uh, the income statement will be next year. Now, when we are speaking about financial budget, we are focusing here, the emphasis is on obtaining funds needed to, uh, to purchase operating assets. See, when we are speaking about financial budget, we are saying, okay, what, how are we gonna buy some assets? So we are speaking about capital budget, uh, completed before the operating budget is begun. Do you remember capital budget? Do you remember something called capital budgeting? When we are making capital budgeting decisions, we are selecting which project we are going to invest in based on what? Payback period, or simple rate of return, or net present value, when we are selecting, doing capital budgeting decision. So first, we have capital budget, we need to understand exactly what projects we, that we are going to use, and we can use capital budgeting methods for us to decide what projects that we are going to use. And we will create our capital budget. After that, we need, okay, we are going to, 
invest in this project or, or we are going to buy these assets. We need cash. So in that way you say, okay, what is the cash the disbursement? Uh, you go to the cash budget, but before you need to understand what is the cash, cash disbursements and collection that you are going to have during the year. How much cash you are going to collect during the year, how much cash you are going to pay during the year, and that will give you the cash budget to uh, make you understand, okay, how much cash you need for you to be able to make investment, to pay all your expenses, and at the same time, what cash are you going to get from your customers? that will make you understand exactly how much cash you should have for you to be able to operate. So that will give you the cash budget. From that, I will be able to understand what is my pro forma for balance sheet and what is my uh, pro forma for the uh, statement of cash flows. Can you see? So the operating will give me the pro forma for income statement. Financial will give me the pro forma for balance sheet and cash flow. Now we are going to go over a, a project budget. So, a project budget consists of all the costs expected to attach to a particular project. Think about it, we have a project. We decided that the, our project, we are going to really create an, a really nice hotel in Syria. So this hotel is a project. So I want to uh, understand all the costs related to this project, which is the creating the hotel. So they are saying, while the project is uh, obviously part of the company's overall line of business, the cost and the profit associated with it are significant enough to be tracked separately. So what we are saying, maybe we are making different hotels in Syria, but for each hotel, we consider it a project, so in that way we need to have its, its own budget. You don't say, okay, well, we have 10 projects, so let's create a budget for the 10 projects. No, you say for each project, I'm gonna create a budget. So here is an example that will show you the budget that we have. They are saying, here is an example of a project budget. See, we have the function. We are saying for the design, we have for the first quarter this amount. We have for the engineering, for the production, for the marketing, for the accounting, for the uh, human resources. So this is our total, uh, see, this is our, here you can see the number that will show you the total uh, cost for this project. So you are creating budget, you are saying, okay, my project, I need to do designing, engineering, production, marketing, accounting, HR. What is the cost? Well, I want to understand for each quarter what's going to happen, and based on it, I will assign the cost, and I will come up with the total cost, which is the total budgeted amount. So this is how you allocate it for each project. Now, if we are speaking about activity-based budgeting, so this is for project. For each project, you say, okay, these are all the costs related to it, we will create the budget. Now, for activity-based budgeting, it's the same thing. Now, we are, rather than speaking about a project, we are speaking about activity. Each activity that you have, you are saying, okay, for this activity, I want to create a budget for the activity itself. So, for activity-based budgeting applies activity-based cost principles to, uh, to budgeting. So, see, we are here saying, to, do you remember activity-based costing, ABC? We are using ABC costings to say, okay, this is the activity we want to understand, all the costs related to the activities and apply, apply the, the, these principles for us to be able to understand the budget that we need to have. So here is an example that they are giving you. They are saying, okay, we have, this is activity and this is an activity. We have simple value and we have a, a complex uh, uh, valve. You have simple valve and complex valve. What we are uh, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to un understand exactly what is the cost for each one. So for each activity, I'm saying direct materials, I'm going to need this direct materials. I'm going to need this direct labor. So in that way, I will understand the total direct cost. And after that, look what I'm doing here. I'm going to allocate my indirect cost to this activity, and I'm going to allocate my indirect cost to this activity based on a rate that I, I decided. And after that, I will come up with what? With the total manufacturing cost for each activity. So when you are doing it for, for activity-based costing, you are saying, okay, for each activity, I want to understand what is the direct labor, direct uh, material, and indirect cost. And that will tell me exactly the cost for each activity. See, so here they are saying for activity-based budgeting involve defining the activities that drive indirect cost. So what is the cost driver? Do you remember? We have always cost object and we have costs and we need to understand the cost driver. So for here we have the simple and complex method. We are going to say maybe we are using the way for us to allocate the indirect cost. We are using what? The machine hours. 
how many hours of machine we need, or we are using the labor hours, how many uh, hours do we need for our labors, or maybe we are using the, the see here we have all the cost drivers, engineering hours, we have number of patches, we have machine hours, n number of forms, we have uh, sales uh, person's hours. And see here the indirect cost pools. We have like production design. So product design. So when we are speaking about the product design, we are using what? Engineering hours. When we are speaking about production setup, we are using, OK, how many batches we have. When we are using about machinings, we are using machining hours. So for each indirect cost, look, all of them, they are indirect cost. I want to understand different drivers for me to be able to assign them to. So for customer maintenance, I want to understand the salesperson hours to be able to allocate the cost. Can you see for, in, for activity, I want to get the activity pool, and after that, allocate it based on the driver that I have. So here they are showing you how we are doing, doing this. So see, we have direct material, direct labor, we know it. For each operation, we know exactly the direct labor and direct material. But for indirect cost, look what we said. We said uh, product cost. We said, okay, for the product cost, we are saying estimated driver level. For simple, assemble, it's 1,000. For complex, is what? 2,800. So in that way, I will be able to really allocate exactly. And we are saying the cost per unit of driver. So we are saying for each product design, we think that the cost for each unit of driver, which is the product design, is going to be what? About 30, uh, $23. And we are multiplying it by the estimated driver level. So what we are saying here, that for the simple method, they use, for the simple uh, valve, they used what? They used 100 hours of engineering, engineering uh, time, of the engineer's time. For this, they used 2,800 hours. If you think about it, about machines, look, for the simple, they used 2,000 hours of the machines for them to produce it. For, uh, for the complex, they used 19,000. So based on this, I will decide, okay, what is the rate that I have, and I will be able to allocate the cost to, the, uh, to each activity. Now we are going to speak about something called zero-based uh, zero budgeting. What's the, of, what's the meaning of zero-based budgeting? So zero-based budgeting is a budget and planning process in which each manager must justify his or her department's entire budget every budget cycle. So rather than saying, OK, I want to say the budget for next year, I would say I will go back and look at the budget for last year and say, oh, I'm going to be doing the same approximately. So last year, for example, we produced 100 cars. We needed about 3 million. This year, we are going to produce 100 cars. So approximately, we need what? 3 million. Zero-based budgeting, we say no. For zero-based budgeting, we are going to start with what? We are going to start from zero. So we are going to start, OK. You don't need anything if you are not going to do anything. So it's zero. And after that, OK, well, I need to produce cars. OK, so in that way, what is the cost of producing these cars? How many laborers do you need? What is the direct materials? What activities you are going to do? And you are going to build it up. So you are building up any activity based on, OK, what costs are you going to add based on the operation or based on what you need? In that way, you build it from zero up. So every year, you need to say, OK, let's go back and let's build it from the beginning. So they say. Uh, for zero-based budgeting differs from traditional concept of incremental budgeting in which current year's budget is simply adjusted to allow for changes uh, planned for coming year. So see, they are saying it, it, it's different than incremental budgeting in which current year's budget is simply adjusted to allow for changes in plan of coming year. The, manag uh, the uh, managerial advantage of incremental budgeting is that manager has to put for less effort to justify the changes in the budget. Under zero-based budgeting, a manager must build the budget every year. See, they need to build it every year based on uh, base of zero. All uh, uh, expenditures must be justified regardless of uh, variance from previous year. So we are saying always we are building everything from what from zero and we are going up. 